In this video, we're gonna be changing the brakes in this 2006 A4 Audi. So we have it all jacked up here. We have it with the hydraulic jack and then plenty of jack stands underneath, all in stable points under the car to make sure it's stable and won't fall. So we have two 21 millimeter caliper bolts in the front here, and these are actually pretty easy to get to, unlike in the back where they're really hard to get to. It's big pain. So we have the caliper all wired up on a wire so it's not hanging by its hoses. You never hang the caliper by its hoses. Always get something to support it. We just have an old piece of wire. Now on some rotors, you might not have this screw here. It just depends on the manufacturer. But this is a T30 Torx that fits right in here. And this basically just holds the rotor on. Now, sometimes these can get pretty stuck. So if you spray it down with some penetrating fluid and then pound the end of it with a hammer, that'll just break the uh, rust loose and make it easier for it to come off. And we'll wiggle, wiggle off the rotor and we got the rotor off. So if you can, try to avoid getting rotors with these holes in here. I'll show you why on the other side. These are kind of a failing point. So here on the other side, you can see this just totally broke into two pieces. I mean, I've never seen that happen on a rotor. So I would really recommend not getting rotors with the holes in them. You can see the ones here that we got don't have the holes. And that's what we want. It's gonna be a lot stronger. So you wanna make sure these flat mating surfaces are clean because you don't want the rotor to be offset and then vibrate. It'll be definitely something you don't wanna have. So just take a little bit of sandpaper or wire brush and just clean off that rust. So now go ahead and put some anti-seize on the mating surfaces here because you don't want the rotor to seize. One time we had it get so seized we had to try to pound it off with a sledgehammer. So this just makes it easier to come off next time. Now we can go ahead and take the rotor, line the hole up, and then lift it into place. And then to hold the rotor in place for the rest of the job, we can put this little screw. Make sure to put anti-seize on this screw as well because when this gets frozen and seized on there, it can be really hard to get out. And you don't wanna strip out that little screw. Just make sure you don't get any anti-seize on the rotor itself because you want your brakes to seize. You don't want them not to. So we'll remove this brake pad just by prying it out. And then we need to push back the piston. And normally that's a simple process, kind of where you can just take this tool here, here, it slides in, and then you're able to push it back. But as you can see, this is solid here. We can't fit the tool in. I don't know why Audi did that. So, so what some people do is they'll take a crowbar and they'll pry it back, and that could work if that's all you have. But we have a, it's like a hydraulic puller. We, we named it Doc Ock with this arm here. We'll try fitting this in here and then using that to try to pull the piston back. Now we'll go ahead and start pumping. We'll just go really slowly. And as you can see, that piston's going back. Just make sure it's going back straight, which it is. That looks good. Okay, and right there, it just seated we'll it. Go ahead and take out Doc Ock. Now we have room to take out this pad here and put the new ones in. To get this brake pad out, you can see the cords coming out of it. We need to unplug that. And up here, there's a plug that should just come right out, just like that. And now, we should be able to try to wiggle this loose. So what you'll need to do on the brake pad on the car is this is the new one. There's a little tab here, and what we'll need to do is lift that up. And you can see there's a slot right here that that will sit in. So just take the screwdriver, pry it up, then you can twist it out of the way. And now this plug should lift right out, just like that. And now we should be able to take the brake pad out the rest of the way, just like that, and then feed the wire through. In order to get this plug through here, we're gonna have to pull the guide pins out just a little bit so that this plug 
can come through the caliper just like that and then that should come right through and now we have the brake pad out. You can see the pads here aren't totally out of life, but the other ones on the other side do need to re be replaced, so we wanna replace them in sets. And you can see everything about these pads are the same. Now, one thing that I like about these is they look exactly the same. And what that means is we won't have to file these too much to get them to glide smoothly where they need to. But now we need to grease the guide pins so that the whole caliper slides smooth. Every time you're in here, you wanna grease these guide pins. That's very important to keep them sliding smoothly. So we can go ahead and slide this out and add the grease. So now we'll wipe down the guide pins here just to make sure we get everything nice and clean. You definitely don't want these to ever get rusty or anything. And then once we clean off all the old grease, We'll put some new stuff on just to get everything operating how it should. We want to make sure and get these super clean. So we're just going to take a piece of 1200 grit sandpaper and get these really shiny and make sure everything is off of these and they're super smooth. You can see this one looks much cleaner than this one. I can feel the debris on this one, but this one is smooth. So this is a very important step not to skip. A lot of people will just skip over this step and go right to putting the brakes in. And also a lot of mechanics won't do this step. They're just trying to get the job done and done fast. Now there are some mechanics that will do this and that's pretty good, but that's one reason why doing your own brakes is pretty good. You get the self-assurance that you know the job is getting done right and the best that it could have done. Now we'll use a little bit of this uh, brake grease or caliper grease. Just put a little bit on those guide pins. Don't need too much. We'll get a little more than that. And put both of this, put this on both of the guide pins. So now we'll put these pieces back together and put the guide pins back in where they're supposed to go. And yeah, that, that slides better than it did before. That's much smoother. So whenever you're putting the new brake pads in, another thing that people will do is they'll just muscle in the brake pads, which is something you definitely don't want to do. If the guides, if the uh, little tabs don't fit, make sure that you take a grinder or a file and file it so they do. Because if these don't glide smoothly, then that could be a big problem. You can see that these just fit in there really nice actually. I'm surprised just first fit in they go right in and they're smooth I mean that's like how they're supposed to fit so it could be a good idea to put grease on these springs here they go back into the cylinder and that really can help you just squeeze that in give you that little bit of an edge on the cylinder this can be pretty tricky to get in just keep fighting with it until it so goes just in. push it until you feel all the springs snap into the cylinder and now we have this one in, and we can go ahead and plug it in. So to fit the plug in, you wanna put it in sideways at first, and then twist it, and then get that hole, or that little nib, to go into the hole there, and then we can plug it in. Now it could be a little tricky to get that nib over the rail, but if we just pry it up with a screwdriver, it can be a little tricky. Then we can get it moving. And then that can slide right into the hole, just like that. And now we can go ahead and put the plug on. There we go. So if this spring piece here comes out, just pry it back in. There's these little tabs that go on right there and that keeps tension on it and then that keeps the pad from moving around. Now we'll go ahead and put the other pad in. And that seems to just fit in nicely. We just gotta wiggle that one piece in there. So now we can go ahead and slide this on. 
just like that. And then we'll line it up with the um, brake um, calipers. So now we can go ahead and put these caliper screws in as far as we can in by hand. And then we'll put them in the rest of the way and torque them with a wrench. So now we'll put just a little bit of anti-seize on the caliper bolts, just a little bit so they won't corrode. And it'll just be a little easier to get them off next time. And now we'll go ahead and put this in. So now we'll tap this into place. And you'll see some rust dust falling. Just be sure not to breathe that in. It's not good to breathe that stuff in. So you wanna put these in as far as you can by hand and then put them in the rest of the way with the ratchet. You just wanna make sure you're not cross threading threads. Now we'll go ahead and tighten up the top bolt here. To be able to put this spring on, this is the last thing we'll do. We'll put it in place once we have the whole assembly bolted in, and then we'll push on the brake, and that'll just compress everything and give us more room. And now we have that on just enough that we can tap it into place, just like that. And now that's seated in and it's in place. So when you put the lug nuts on, Make sure they go in as far as you can by hand. Of course, you never put these in with an impact hammer. You always put them in as far as you can by hand. And then with the breaker bar, and then you do the last step with the torque wrench and torque them. And then if, whenever you tighten this up, do it in the star pattern so the wheel Seats on evenly, it's very important. If you don't do it in the start pattern, the wheel could sit on cockeyed, which is definitely not what you want. Now that the car is down on the ground, we can go ahead and torque these in a star pattern to 88 foot-pounds and then take it for a drive and double check them just to make sure they didn't back out because sometimes they will. So if you have a torque wrench, every time you use it, you always want to retract the spring and take this all the way down to the bottom or else it'll lose its accuracy. So it's always important to take it all the way back. So now we'll go ahead and line up the grooves that are here. They aren't spaced evenly. It's kind of awkward how they have it, but we'll line them up just like that. And then pop them on, just like that. So that's how you put new pads and rotors on a 2006 Audi A4. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.